Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model low poly vegetables in Blender. This is part two and today we're going to model a leak. This is the finished object and I designed this so you can follow along very easily. Let's start by setting up some reference. I will provide the download link of this image in the description below. Here we go. And we get the general shape, which is a cylinder, and scale it in the x and y axis, but not the z axis by pressing Shift Z. Now let's get into edit mode and extract these faces down and scale them. This looks good. Now for the top, there's something new. We are going to inset the face. Just press I to inset and S to scale it down and repeat the steps to generate this shape right here. To get the leaves of the leak, we are extracting these, uh, these faces here. And to get the look right, I'm alternating by extracting the two faces and then the next two, as you can see here. Now let's select all the top faces here. So we can scale them up and extrude them. By pressing E, we are extruding the faces, and by pressing Z, we are extruding them in the Z axis. Let's get to evening out the mesh. And by pressing G, we can grab the faces here and place them as we like. Let's spread them out a little and then get into the side view to work on that form a little more. If you want to select a whole edge loop, you can press Alt and left click. And if you want to move your selection on this level, so in X and Y direction, but not into the Z axis direction, just push G to grab, then Shift Z Alright, to give this a more random look, a little bit more organic, let's select some of these top faces by pushing G 
and then pushing Z Let's repeat this step until we're happy with what we're seeing. And now let's get into top view. Select these inner top faces and enable the proportional editing tool. And we want to rotate the form around the Z axis. By scrolling the middle mouse wheel, we can set the radius of our proportional editing tool. And as you can see, if we rotate it now, more of the faces, vertices and edges are coming with. Now we want to select all of the top, so we're going to X-ray mode by pressing Alt-Z. Because we want to bend this form. And to bend the object, you have to press Shift and W, and you will bend always around the 3D cursor. I want a little more of a rounded shape on the bottom of our model. So I'm dropping the loop cut by pressing Alt and left click. And then by pressing the S button to scale, then pressing Shift Z to scale in the X and Y at the same time. I'm setting the geometry as you can see here. Now we are applying a modifier, a displace modifier, by adding a new texture. But keep in mind that you have to be in object mode to apply the displace to the whole model. I like to keep the values low because I want just a slight variation in the mesh. And by pressing the plus button, I generate a new texture and I'm choosing clouds for the displacement. You can set the values down here for another details. So let's get a little lower here, maybe a bit more here. But the bottom faces don't look that right. So a value of 0.1 will do just fine. Okay. This is our modeling. Now let's get into shading. As with the carrot, we want a gradient texture along the Z axis. So we're placing a texture coordinate node, then a mapping node, and to separate X, Y, and Z node into our material, because we want to use the Z axis. Now for the color ramp, let's plug this in and connect it to the base color. And as you can see, the gradient just works. Our reference shows us that we need a few more colors. And we can do this easily here in the color ramp. But first, let's set up the base color of the bottom part here. When you're creating low poly models, color can be your best friend because it's very easy to set it up and it gives a little bit more detail to your model. It will help understanding the form 
and it catches the eye. To add a color, just click the plus sign here. And let's set this to white to define our bottom part of the leak. Okay, well, let's work on the top. We need a green here, dark green. And we need another handle on our car ramp. Let's add the light green here and tweak the handles so the gradient works for you. If you're placing the handles near each other, the gradient will look a bit sharper and you, if you give it some space you can see that the gradient will fade out. So the top gradient looks fine, but I want a little bit more of the light green color to reach to the bottom. So I will just add another handle with the green light green color. Alright, I think this looks quite nice. Now let's get rid of the hard edges by plugging in a bevel node. So last time we added some detail by painting on the model and using this as a texture, but now I prepared a squiggly line a texture and we are using this image. Just add an image texture node. And as you can see here, it's just lines that are going from top to bottom. And if you want to see what the image looks like, you can press uh, Shift, Control, and then left click if you have the Node Wrangler add on enabled, what I would highly recommend. We want to use this image as a normal man manipulation. So let's set it up to non color data and plug this into our bump map. We zoom in now, you can see we have some nice detail, but it's a little sharp, so you can always tweak the values. And I want it to be just a slight variation of the surface. Okay, and this is it. This is your leak. Let's look at it rendered. Now it's time for you to get creative and create some variations of this leak. So show me your work on Twitter by tagging me or setting me up with your Instagram and tell me what you would like to see next in this format.
If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!